There we go. The butt fucked RV is going on the first voyage. Ready to go, ready to roll. It's time for something a little freaky. Oh yeah. Antler proudly presents. Oh yeah. Butt fucked. Butt fucked RV. It's totally fucked. Fucked. We are ready to roll. Let's do this. Up to our first rest stop here in Montana. We're on our way down the road. We're gonna to try to go to a campground and divide. Let's see if it's packed or not. Whew. Should be interesting to find a place to sleep tonight. Looks like the campground just 30 minutes out of town with no cell service, which is beautiful. We got the last slot. And there's our rig. And believe it or not, when we first pulled up, we got looks. Oh yeah, we got looks. So we're gonna chow down on our steak dinner and maybe go for a walk. So this is the Divide Bridge campground. It's a $10 a night. I think it's Bureau of Land Management of Butte. What do you think, boy? It's your first time living in an RV down by the river. I think somebody actually commented on that <laughs> on the last video. I found the river and it's really full with all the rain we're having here or had here in Montana. The river is just a roaring. Cool. Would you look at this? Campground has a bathroom. Plenty of toilet paper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, nothing better than a nice warm campfire to wind down the evening with. The bad part is, we're 30 miles from town, and guess what I forgot at the store before I left? Yeah, beer. Ah, oh, oh well. At least we have water hookups. It's morning time. Out for a morning stroll and doggy's just yanking on here. Look at this, look at this. Is there something in there you want, boy? Huh? Is there something in there you want? Come on, what is it? Huh? What is it? Huh? That's it? You're done? Wow, look how high the water is here. Yep. Now here in Dillon, Montana, just had to make a pit stop here at this Safeway, and we're gonna head on down to Idaho. Well, this is how you shake down an RV. That's right, we're all, we were almost over the Montana border by about two and a half miles, and yep, that's what happened. So now we're looking for a tow to take us to Idaho Falls to figure out what we're gonna do next. But right now, yeah. We were coming up the Manita Pass. I think it got a little hot and then all of a sudden I heard a pop just as we came over on the downhill side and that's all she wrote. And then I heard a you know clicking sound like something fell from the, the RV. So I don't know. We're, we're dead out of luck. Tommy's gonna get me. So we're, we just got dropped off by the tow truck. Today's a Sunday. So of course, this place is closed. We're in Idaho Falls. And we're gonna attempt to boondock in their parking lot until they open tomorrow morning. And I'm gonna make some chili here, cause I'm hungry. Yeah. And I'm having a beer. Yep. Con pie. It's been a long day. Mm. You know what? There was a hotel across from that repair shop. So you know what? Fuck boondocking in the RV in the Let's get a shower in this bad boy. Ooh, RV life ain't got that. Ooh, look at this room. Got a nice big TV. Hiding in here, we got a fridge with some beer that I took from the RV. We got a desk here, I can set up my laptop, get some Wi-Fi going on, air conditioning. Not the greatest view, but it's a view. Beautiful artwork on the wall, a couch, it's pet friendly, we got the dog in here. So yeah, you know what? Why go with an RV? Why not just get a good vehicle? I mean a good vehicle, it's a lot cheaper than an RV, and stay in beautiful hotel rooms. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow, if anything changes our mind. So here is all that remains of the butt-fucked RV. It got butt-fucked. 
The repair work I had done before we left on the distributor, the distributor broke inside the engine and completely destroyed it. Unfortunately, because we are moving to get to the new nomadic job, um, I only have $5,000 in the budget and it would have cost exactly $5,000 to save our butt-fucked RV. So only choice I had was to rent the U-Haul. Everything's in here. I took out everything I installed in that RV, every solar panel, every every LED light, even the, uh, um, what do you call it, the shower head. I took every part that I installed in that thing out. Um, I even took the drawer and the painting that's back there. Right now we've got to um, get the food out of the fridge because it's probably bad anyways now, but yeah. I guess we're continuing on this road trip this way. Oh. It, it was really, really sad. I wish I could have saved her. Just don't have the money. But the view here just before we leave the mountains is pretty. We're still traveling, right? We're still on a road trip. I think here, we're getting close to that point where we'll be leaving mountains and heading into uh, flat country for the rest of the drive. If we want to camp, I guess we could sleep in the back of it. I keep having moments, you know? I just keep having these moments like, Wishing I was driving my RV through here. Asshole mechanic. We must be in Wyoming because um, the mountains have turned into hills. Yeah, the mountains have turned into hills. This is our hotel room in Sydney, Nebraska. Look how high those ceilings are. They go way up there. It's got a microwave, a fridge. We got ourselves a sink here. Well, this is an interesting shower setup. Whoa. Neato. I have no, wow. Be afraid to break that. I've never seen a hotel room like this before. Ooh, cool. I think this is a king size bed. Huge TV. Some lamp, some art. This is probably a closet. Yep, it's a closet. Air conditioning, a chair, and a nightstand. Cool. Well, even though the RV is no more, at least we've been uh, staying in some pretty cool hotel rooms. So this is uh, Lincoln, Nebraska on the 4th of July. Hmm. Weird thing about it is uh, this interstate has three lanes and it's like a ghost town. There's like nobody up here and it's like 5.30. Really weird. Uh, I guess everyone's at their uh, parties or gatherings with family, I don't know. It just seems really odd to see a highway this empty. So we stayed in Iowa City, Iowa. And as you can tell, as we head east, the hotel room quality starts to degrade. Ugh. Yeah, it's a comfort in, but you know, at least it has all the amenities. When I first saw the carpet, then I'm like, Ugh, yuck. Starting the hotels are at least now under $100 a night, you know, compared to the, uh, the west where they want to charge you almost $200 a damn night. Nothing fancy. Just, yeah. And the funny thing is, it was a comfort in suites we stayed in, um, what was it, uh, where we stayed in Sydney. Yeah. Well, we're getting up so we can get out of here and get back on the road. Here we go, crossing the mighty Mississippi River. See how big this river really is, because it's very Mississippi-ish. See, this is up in what, uh, crossing into, Illinois. Let's see here. There it is, the Mississippi River. Oh, look at this bridge. Yeah. It's taking a while. <laughs> We're almost across it. across now. Here we go, the Mississippi River. And here we are about to enter, 
Our last state to travel through for today. Welcome to Illinois. Thank you. Ooh wee! Now this is a rainstorm. Oh yeah. Hey, at least it's cleaning the windows. Wow. I can barely see anything. Windshield wipers are on full blast. Oh my goodness. Wow. I wonder if Buck Buck RV could survive this. <laughs> if Babe was still around. <laughs> So this is my first time seeing Lake Michigan in Michigan City. Should I give you an update? The update is I'm working now, trying to get money for a new RV. Still living the hotel life. I'd show them to you, but they're pretty crappy. Pretty shitty. Can't wait to get back in an RV. Uh, maybe I'll do uh, truck camping or something. Boondocking that or Airbnb. I don't know, I'll figure something out. This is the work truck I'm using for work. It's a company truck. What's neat about it, it's got this back and I've turned it into a boondocking paradise. Right now it's got my clothes up here. I can put them up front and I can put my pillows here, my sleeping bag and snooze up you know in the back so there's my boondocking rig so i got a place to sleep there because i just cannot do the roommate thing you know i'm, I'm my own person i like to be alone after work and the best part about it is i can also go camping yep and you know what i think i'm starting to like this better than the rv I, you know i always got to set up you know when i tear down when i leave and whatnot but that's not a big deal this is my campsite here isn't it beautiful here Look at that. This is in Michigan City, Indiana. This is my bedroom over here. Right now the sleeping bag and pillows, I'm boondocking in the truck are in there, but since I'm at a campsite, I go ahead and just put it in a tent. Simple as that. Then over here, this is my campfire. Uh, right now I'm just using those logs you buy at Walmart, you know, because that way I don't have to sit there and play and start a fire. They're about $2.50 a piece. They work, they last about two hours. I usually will add another one when that one's halfway done and it's just right. Especially because it's hot here. It's just need a little bit to take the chill off in the evening and have something to watch. Kitchen, got my water made with the Berkey filter stuff. Um, that's my stove, tea kettle for making coffee, whatever. Um, my battery charger's there, Bluetooth speaker for listening to music. And Actually, I've been just listening to podcasts. I play music when I go to sleep in the tent, put it on low so it doesn't disturb anybody. Snacks, this is my barbecue, oh yes. And tonight, we're gonna cook some chicken. Mm. Over here, it's my trash bag, and that's my light. May not have an RV anymore, but you know what? This is kinda cool, I'm still camping. You know, I'm still boondocking, just doing it a little bit different than I originally planned. The adventure and journey continues. So here's the new Home on Wheels, 2001 Econoline van. Yeah, this back seat turns into a bed and I fit perfectly on it. As you can tell, it does have a high top, so you, I can stand in here. My head kind of hits a little bit, but not bad, it's standable has a TV. Yes, it has a TV. Cleaning it up right now. Going through some of the stuff we took out of the RV to see what I can put in here. It's comfy, it's nice, nice ride. My thinking is set up a little kitchen area over here, have the fridge over there. Um, need to find like a table or something that I can use to work on the computer, to sit there, work on the computer, have the doors open. Got plenty of storage. We're storing stuff like the tent, I'm gonna keep the tent. And of course, I have like an outdoor awning thing. I haven't showed you guys that. And if you want to hang your clothes, it's got a place to put hangers on both sides. AC works in it. Got a speaker up there. The TV does work, but you know, it does have AV cables. So there you go. I could plug something into it, but I might get a small TV set and just put it over there and use that as storage. So all things come in the future. What will happen with living in van life 2.0? Now the RV is gone. Welcome to Campsite 2.0. Yep, 
in the uh, RV park here. Got power going in so I can run my fridge because I don't have solar set up on this thing yet, but maybe in the future it works perfectly. Of course, that's the couch bed, however you want to call it. Let me give you the grand tour. Of course, here is the TV, my water, my backpack. Over here, I put the shelf in here. This was something I put in the RV, if you remember, where the solar system was set up. But now I can put my little portable stove up here. I can cook up here, prepare food on it, whatever. Ridge is over here. And it's keeping, keeping stuff cool right now. I have it plugged in because this is an RV slot and I can get power here. Paintings over there. And this was a curtain that, if you remember, was from the RV. I don't want to do pins for areas that I have. Only thing I lost, of course, is my map. So I have to buy a new map because it didn't come off right. And that's just random junk down there. There's my vacuum, floor, the carpets that I had in the RV, uh, trash, my buddy heater back there. And then I bought this yesterday. This is a little table. So that way, when you're sitting on the couch there, you got a table to eat on or work on the computer, whatever. It's just an all around table, it's just a little fold up deal. Simple. And then over here, this is uh, what you call an outdoor tent with the screen on it. And then here, of course, I got one of my chairs. I'm alone this week. The wife is in town this week. And where I've got everything kind of set up here on this table for chilling. Get a little bit in or not out here, so I'm gonna watch YouTube at 144p. Not too bad. A little fan on the other little battery pack there charge my phone that blows air on me while I'm chilling and watching some YouTube it's just right so I don't need air conditioning this campground has a bathhouse so got restrooms and place to take a shower now when I originally bought this I uh, didn't think about um, how overkill it was yeah and it was only a hundred dollars but it's overkill but I can stand up in it my clothes some dishes over there water some of those presto logs that's the bed i'm doing tent life slash van life now and i like it so with that i think it's time to wrap up this episode and start new adventures in unnamed blue mr grand van i don't know we'll have to come up with a new name for now can't call the series butt fucked rv because butt fucked rv is butt fucked so from this time and every time on, folks, remember to keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Anthware, signing off.